Hello data fans, there are so many things going on in the streaming community right now, from apps shared on social media to talks and meetups and startups built from streaming apps. It's very nice seeing such a lively and vibrant community, you know, but at the same time, it's a little bit hard for me to, to choose a single topic or tutorial to talk about in a video. So I, you know, I thought, why not talk about everything? And in this video, let me share with you my top 10 streaming things that happened in those last three months and if one of them deserves its own video well let me know in the comments and i will gladly consider it how do i do nested buttons in streamlit i've got a full video about it it's one of my very first video on my channel here check it out here somewhere i don't <laughs> i don't master this and the solution in this video involves storing the click state of a button inside session state so that it can be reused for the duration of the app a and i get it this can be a little bit cumbersome if you've got lots of buttons in your app and this could probably be automated right well Blackary has created a stateful button inside the Streamit Extras library which preserves its clicked state inside its own widget. Let me show you the demo app stateful button inside Streamit Extras. You can see in the code you've got three buttons, button 1, 2 and 3 and when you click on the button 1 its state goes to true so you go to the nested if of button 2. But here normally when you click on button 2 button 1 goes back to false so you don't go inside the nested if and you stay blocked at button 1. Here when you click on button 2, with stateful button, the state of button 1 stays to true. And so you still go inside the nested ifs and so you can see button 3 here, you can click on it and there you go, all 3 buttons are pressed. We need to talk about the latest AI trend that is shaking the world right now. You may be wondering, well Fanil, why are you not talking about those language models? You're talking about AI in Streamlit, right? Well, you know, I release a video every 2 weeks so I don't really have time to surf on the AI trends, but no, you won't see me talking about ChatGPT nor GPT-3 on this channel. Knowledge GPT is a streaming app that enables you to upload one of your documents that you're too lazy to read and then ask questions about it. Let me put my OpenAI key first, apply and then upload one of my documents. For example, a white paper about AI and hyper automation that I don't clearly remember anymore. And then I can ask a question about the document. I don't know, for example, uh, what are examples of hyper automation? Let's submit and then here is parsing the documents using OpenAI GPT-3 I presume and then here examples of hyper automation include robotic process automation, artificial intelligence and machine learning and if you need more details about those answers you can check out the sources from the document that has been parsed so blah 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 it's probably here telling you the page and the paragraph to read from the page so that makes me think of researchers who need to read a hundred pages of state of the art papers and, and maybe they need to quickly skim into the document and Knowledge GPT can help them do that. Matt GPT. Rosena Poles had trouble using Chat GPT for mathematical questions. And so he augmented GPT-3 with NumPy data and documentation. He posted about it on Twitter and instant virality. Let me ask it a question. Alicia is five years old, Paul is double her age, what will be Paul's age in seven years? Control enter to apply, Paul's age in seven years will be 17. And you can see the Python code that solves the answer and there's even comments, which is amazing. Alicia is five years old, so Alicia age equals five, Paul is double her age, so Paul age equals Alicia age times two and then it does this operation and then it writes the answer in a streaming app. Want some tutorials to build those streaming apps in front of ChatGPT and GPT-3? You can check Avra's YouTube channel, he's awesome, he's got a lot of tutorials about it. Go check him out. Another streaming GPT app, GPT-0 is a streaming app that detects if text was generated by AI. Wait. Apparently this is the retired version of the GPT-0 beta and there's a full version coming soon. Okay, let's click on the link. GPT-0 humans deserve the truth. Oh, this is a beautiful react. Is there a pricing?
Yeah, email for new features and API access. Okay. Fever AI was streaming it December 2022 up of the month, and it was built during a hackathon in a day or a week or something. So very quick <laughs> implementation. It enables you to summarize the audio from a YouTube video or a TED talk or a podcast or any other audio sources and, and get a summary of it. Let's use it. Our beta ended on January 27th. Our beta was a huge success. Blah, over 2,500 people used our demo to summarize podcasts, YouTube videos, and etc. We've decided to keep the lights on. We're forming a, com a company and, and launching our service in a matter of days. Okay, and now you've got this beautiful landing page. Uh, probably a React one. Turn video audio into text summaries. Trusted by 2,500 users. That's the stat from the StreamIt app. Now this is a trend I'm seeing more and more. If you're into AI startups, StreamIt apps are being used as public beta versions to validate a concept or to validate that an AI powered feature has a sizable market that is ready to pay or use the product. If you want to build an AI startup, validate your concept through a StreamIt app works well. Let's find out more of those cool StreamIt frontends over generative AI features. So stuff like diffusers, uh, by Abhishek from Hugging Face, a streaming UI over the Diffusers library, which is a collection of the latest state-of-the-art uh, diffusion models, which enables you to do a lot of the generative image AI stuff, like in painting or text to image or image to image. Or Whisper UI, which is a streaming frontend over OpenAI's Whisper speech to text model. But you know, you don't have to build advanced AI streaming apps to be appreciated by the community. You, I personally love small streaming apps that solve a single need. For example, this Pomodoro app. I regularly do Pomodoro when I'm doing video editing. I want to edit for 45 minutes and cry for five minutes. I can go to the settings page, put up 45 minutes of Pomodoro, go back to home, and then start my Pomodoro. You can see it's also starting uh, some relaxing music on the left from YouTube. And I say simple app, but I'm not really sure it's actually a simple app. <laughs> Even this, maybe that involves an async thread to not block StreamIt's own main thread. And when I go in statistics, which I, I didn't check yet, there's a list of all of the Pomodoris that I've completed. I completed zero. There's a timeline of events. And the, <laughs> apparently there's even a list of all of the Pomodoros that I started and ended here, saved. There's even one from yesterday <laughs> wow uh i wonder if those are saved in cookies or local storage but this is amazing if you want more info about this app if uh, if you want to see me break down this app tell me in the comments this looks super nice or you can play video games in streamlit here is a dungeon crawler in streamlit let's start a game and yeah here you're the little knight here you can see that you cannot see that <laughs> but here's the little knight and then when I press the right key, the little knight is moving. Oh wow, he's moving in the corridor. If we pick the treasure, yo, yeah, plus one gold. I'm rich. Oh, let's touch that enemy, yay. Or maybe that's not an enemy because this one here is a little scarier. You can see every time I press a key, uh, on my keyboard, there's this running on the top right of the app. So I suppose this is actually all Python logic. So the map, the character, the enemies, the gold, etc. This is all stored in Python objects. And there's probably an HTML view that is generated from those objects and that is displayed on the StreamIt app because I don't think Pygame or any video game engine works on StreamIt because it uses different threads and different architectures. So I think this is all an HTML. 5 game. <laughs> okay, let's attack this enemy. Yay! Ah, attack me. Oh, the monster was more powerful than expected. By the way, if you're trying to deploy your own StreamIt app uh, in your company behind a reverse proxy like Apache Web Server or Nginx or Asha Proxy, if you're getting stuck on a loading state, loading screen, maybe your WebSocket connection is being blocked by the reverse proxy or the firewall. So make sure you're opening the slash stream WebSocket connection in your reverse proxy and passing it to your StreamIt server.
server and that you're not blocking any WebSocket connections in the firewall of your company or your laptop. Before deploying your Streamit app, you should always upgrade your version. Now Streamit 1.17 is out. It's got new features for Experimental Singleton and Experimental Mimo. Experimental Singleton now has a validate parameter which enables you to check that the resource is still working in the cache, like for example a database connection. If it has disconnected, you want to regenerate it. All experimental memos persist now accept boolean, so I think if when it's true, it, the cache is being persisted on this for later reuse. When it's false, it's all in memory. Okay, let me show you something cool. Uh, focus, okay? I'm coming back. This is getting started with Shumit for data science. It's kinda like the Shumit official book because it's written by Tyler Richard, senior data scientist in the Shumit team. You can see I've got a signed version. That's because I've got an interview in this book. If you didn't know, there's a second version of this book currently being written by Tyler Richard, the same author. Maybe it will be released the uh, end of the year, but I have no clue. And apparently the authors of the extra Shumit components library, the one that you use if you want to store and retrieve cookies from your viewers browser they also published a book web application development with shimlet that i need to read i didn't read it yet i don't know maybe i should do a review for those two books but for that i need to ask an expert about how to do book reviews for youtube in other technical news when you empty a parent container in streamlit that contains a, a lot of streamlit widgets like here for example i will change to page one and the parent container containing metric two and three will disappear but instead the widgets they're marked as to be removed but they still linger like like gray ghosts in the app and this is a little bit troublesome you want it to disappear they've been marked as to be emptied my preferred solution right now and the thing i recommend is to not empty full containers and instead try to empty as deeply as possible so empty the placeholders for the metrics instead of the parent container. But I understand if that's not possible for all of you who have this gigantic dashboard with 50 buttons and 50 plots. So there's a new solution by Harold Yusum that I discovered yesterday so I didn't have time to plunge into it. It's called Clean Slate Rendering and I think the solution is to store slots of widgets in session state and instead of emptying and re-rendering widgets, you swap <laughs> widgets between session state and the actual app. I think it's something like this, I'm not really sure, but just so you know, if you need some advanced rendering solutions in Streamlit, you should go read that GitHub issue, it's got a lot of details, check it out. Front-end developers, you can see from this problem that Streamlit sometimes is not as reactive as a React app. That may be a problem that is solved later in the long run, but it's still not React. Don't get me wrong, I love Streamlit. I built data apps, I explore data with Streamlit, I demo features to customers with Streamlit without thinking about layout or design, and some people build startups using Streamlit app. But Sometimes I do want that, you know, that robust React JS reactivity. I want that true web development feeling in Python. Maybe it will be PyScript. Right now for me, it's still React plus FastAPI. I am try to double with Dash and Panel, but I think I need to put more efforts into those before doing tutorials about them. And this week I started playing with Pinecone. Like now Pinecone is a Python to Next.js transpiler. I have wanted to learn Next.js forever. You see all of those landing pages like this one? This is probably Next.js. If you tell me that this is Next.js that is generated from Python code, well, I'm going to test it. There are other Python web frameworks that I want to try pretty soon. There's item, for example, which gives you uh, components, reusable components, whose API is pretty close to the React API, but in Python. And there's also Flats, a way to use Python to generate Flutter applications that then can be cross-built into web apps or desktop executables or mobile apps. Back to Streamlit. We as Streamlit creators, we recently had access to testing the latest beta features not yet in the public repo. Now I cannot really talk about them because they're in testing, obviously. But 
those are really exciting features and you can find them actually in the roadmap in the link in the description below otherwise there are some features ready for launch uh, for example fixed printing through the browser or ability to serve static files and columns inside columns the very exciting features that are about to get released so don't forget to subscribe to get notified about those anyway that's all i wanted to talk about in this video i'll see you around bye